First Timothy chapter 1 today. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope. In Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says that the non-Christian has no hope because they do not have Jesus Christ. Here the Bible says that Jesus is our hope. It's all about Jesus, isn't it? He must be the focus of our faith. Through Jesus, our sins are paid for. Through Jesus, we are forgiven. Through Jesus, we will be raised. We must receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, or we have no hope. Jesus is our hope. 2. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Timothy was like an extension of the Apostle Paul. Of all the people Paul ministered with, Timothy was his favorite. He said, I have no one like him. No one was more like Paul, sold out completely to Christ, than Timothy. And and, and when, when you're like that, and you meet somebody like that, you want to be around them. 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Timothy's job? Order anyone in the Ephesian church who was teaching wrong things to stop. As pastor, Timothy is responsible to guard the souls of the people in his church. A pastor must proclaim what is correct and also expose what is incorrect, or he will have to answer to God for it. Verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. The false teachers in the Ephesian church told all sorts of stories that had nothing in the world to do with God's word or Christian orthodox truth. So they would, they would talk about all these stories and then they would teach theories drawn from their stories and then they taught those theories as if they were facts and they argued about their theories and it was just such a big waste of time it did not accomplish anything for God or increase the faith of the Christians there you know you're better off teaching God's word for 30 minutes than and to speculate on useless subjects and talk about nothing for hours. Man, when you come to church, you need to be fed the pure Word of God, not get in buzz sessions about things that do not matter. Verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. The false teachers with their foolish stories and their high sounding fables only stirred up arguments and hard feelings among the Christians but as Timothy teaches the word of God the Christians will start loving God and each other more because that's what happens you know the false teachers offered verbal junk food God's word is spiritual meat and potatoes and that's what needs to be fed to Christians 6. Talking about, talking about the Word of God, verse 6, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. And so this is what was going on in the Ephesian church. A lot of people saying a lot of things, all of it useless chatter. When a church stops teaching the Word of God, Anything that replaces it is the equivalent of vain jangling, as God says here. 
What a waste. I tell you what, I would not go. I guarantee it. Verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor that about which they affirm. The false teachers wanted to be admired as teachers of deep truths about God's word. But they did not understand the scriptures at all. They taught emptiness. The problem is they taught emptiness with great eloquence and confidence. None of what they said was true. Therefore it did not pr produce any results, any good results. This is empty chatter spoken with authority. And that can lead people astray. When emptiness or even false doctrine is spoken with great authority, some people latch on. They follow it. 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. The law of God is good because God gave it. The false teachers misused the law of God and the entire word of God. They were using it out of context to support their foolish theories. And many do that today. They have some foolish notion, some new doctrine, and it can't be supported from Scripture. And so what they do is they find a Scripture that they can twist and turn to back up their false teaching. Notice it again, but we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Use the law lawfully. Use the word of God lawfully. In other words, in the right way. The law's purpose and the purpose of the entire Bible is very simple. It shows us what is right, is wrong, what is right and wrong. And it shows us what we should do and what we should not do. And it shows us the way to heaven through Jesus Christ. Verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. The law is given by God for bad people. The law is not there for good people. If the world was filled with sinless people, who always did what was right in the eyes of God, God would have had no need to give us His holy law. But people are sinners. And so they need rules to live by. And just, just think about it. What an indictment on the human race. God has to tell us not to kill each other? Not to steal from each other? And He has to command us to care for each other? What does that say about the human race? 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, the false teachers misused the law of God. But the correct use of God's law goes hand in hand with the gospel of salvation through Christ. The law shows us that we are sinners. The message of Christ is that through what Jesus has done on the cross, Jesus can make us clean. And so the law does go hand in hand with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, in that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Paul feels very grateful to Christ. You know, he had been very sincere in his opposition to Jesus. He thought he was doing God a favor. He was sincere, but he was on his way to hell. But Jesus appeared and set Paul straight and even made him an apostle. But it just goes to show that a lot of people sincerely believe they are on their way to heaven, but they are not. 13. Talking about himself, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief Paul used to speak evil about Christ 
and he felt it, 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 that it was his job to arrest or even kill any who would follow Jesus but when Paul understood the truth he repented and God had mercy on him we all sin just as Paul did but the important thing is to realize how bad we've been and to repent if we do if we repent God will show us mercy also just like he did the Apostle Paul if God forgave Paul he will forgive anyone 14 and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus Paul was shown mercy by God a lot of it plus he received the grace to believe in Christ and to love the Savior that he once tried to destroy and to love Christians who he used to persecute what a, what a turnaround that sort of turnaround from the inside out is something that only God can do because only God can change a person's heart and those who experience what Paul experienced are very grateful to God through Jesus Christ because they realize how close they were to hell that's why Paul was so grateful he just thanked God all the time 15 this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners stop right there some people say Jesus came to earth to show us by example how we should live well that's true he did do that but his main purpose was to die on the cross and save sinners from hell a lot of people don't accept that they don't want to hear it because it makes them look bad well we are bad we are sinners and someone needs to save us and Jesus can't do it by his example alone because we can't follow his example in our own power Jesus is the only one who can save us from hell and he died to pay for our sins so 15 again this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief the apostle was sure that he was the worst sinner who ever lived and the worst one Jesus will ever save the reason Paul was so dedicated to Christ is that he knew how bad he was and therefore was so grateful for the Lord's mercy the more honest we are about our own sinfulness the more we will love Jesus and serve him for his great mercy 16 nevertheless for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them who should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life Paul went from being the worst sinner to one of the most on fire Christians maybe the most on fire Christian who ever lived I don't know anybody who beats him and God was patient with Paul and God forgave Paul and placed in him a love for Christ to show that he can save anyone no one is too bad for God to save he's already saved the worst if anybody thinks oh I'm too bad God can't save me he needs to see what Paul said Paul said he was the worst sinner of all and God saved me said Paul to prove that he could save anyone they will only turn to Christ verse 17 now unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever amen notice as Paul thinks about the great mercy shown him through Christ he cannot contain his praise he just lets loose you know you don't have to teach someone who knows they've been saved from hell you don't have to teach them to worship you don't have to teach them to thank Jesus Christ it comes natural 18 this charge I commit unto thee son Timothy according to the prophecies which pointed to thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare 
And so as the leader in the Ephesian church, Timothy needs to expose the false teachings and stop the false teachers. Plus, he needs to teach the truth. That's his job. There is a spiritual war going on in the world. It is a war for the souls of people. And the mind of man is the battlefield. And the weapons are the truth of God's word and the fine-sounding deceptions that come ultimately from the devil. And Satan is so slick. He has so many strains of deceptions. He has so many different types of deceptions, all designed to take souls to hell along with him. And it is the job of a pastor to expose those deceptions, which means sometimes he has to be negative. And you can't make everybody feel good all the time. Because it is the job of the pastor to expose those deceptions and teach Christians God's word, God's word so that they will not be drawn into this sorts of error. 19. Holding faith in a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwrecked. Our conscience really is a gift from God, but our conscience needs to be fed the Word of God so that it contains God's will and God's truth. And, and then, once our conscience is renewed by the Word of God, then we must listen to our conscience and do what it says. Those who ignore their conscience very likely will ruin their faith if they had any to begin with. Like Jesus says, even what they have will be taken away from them. The truth that they believe will be taken away from them if they don't act on it. And so in order not to be a casualty of the spiritual war, a person must be faithful to the truth that they understand. You play with death when you willfully sin against the truth that you know is truth and you don't repent. You're playing with death. 20. Of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. These two guys are two examples of men who ruined their faith. And we know from Second Timothy that one of them became a false teacher and the other just a spiritual troublemaker. Caused Paul a lot of grief. An apostle he kicked them out of the church because they would not stop causing trouble. And he kicked them out of the church, no doubt, to wake them up spiritually before it's too late. We are to be patient with each other as we grow in Christ because we all have a long way to go. We need to be patient with one another's flaws. But when it comes to those who are an evil influence to God's people, promoting things that are not true. There can be no patience. You warn them. If they do not listen, you remove them. 